Hi, my name is Deacon Jim, and this is St. Bernadette in South Los Angeles. Today is Thursday, May 16th, and we can continue our march toward the end of Easter. We're in the final days of the Easter season, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's begin as we always begin, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, as we begin our celebration, let us praise our merciful God. Lord Jesus, you came to seek out those who were lost. Lord, have mercy. You came to give your life for the sake of all. Christ, have mercy. You came to gather into one family your scattered children. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. May your spirit, O Lord, we pray, imbue us powerfully with spiritual gifts that we may give, he may give us a mind pleasing to you and graciously conform us to your will. Your Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And let us come together as we break open the scripture. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Wishing to determine the truth about why Paul was being accused by the Jews, the commander freed him and ordered the chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin to convene. Then he brought Paul down and made him stand before them. Paul was aware that some were Sadducees and some were Pharisees. So he called out before the Sanhedrin, My brothers, I am a Pharisee, the son of a Pharisee. I am on trial for hope in the resurrection of the dead. When he had said this, a dispute broke out between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the group became divided. For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection or angels or spirits, while the Pharisees acknowledge all three. A great uproar occurred, and some scribes belonging to the Pharisee party stood up and sharply argued, We find nothing wrong with this man. Suppose a spirit or an angel has spoken to him. The dispute was so serious that the commander afraid that Paul would be torn to pieces by them, ordered his troops to go down and rescue Paul from their midst and take him into the compound. The following night, the Lord stood by him and said, Take courage, for just as you have borne witness to my cause in Jerusalem, so you must also bear witness in Rome. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Not to give the ending of the story away, but what happens to Paul in Rome? He gets executed. Just FYI. Today, my brothers and sisters, our responsorial psalm is, Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Keep me safe, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, my Lord are you. O Lord, my allotted portion and my cup, you it is who hold fast my lot. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. I bless the Lord who counsels me. Even in the night my heart exhorts me. I set the Lord before me ever. With him at my right hand I shall not be disturbed. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Therefore, my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body, too, abides in confidence, because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. You will show me the path to life fullness of joys in the presence, the delights at your right hand forever. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Alleluia, alleluia. 
Alleluia, alleluia. May they all be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that the world may believe that you sent me, says the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Lifting up his eyes to heaven, Jesus prayed, saying, I pray not only for these, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, so that they may all be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I am in you, that they may also may be in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. I have given them the glory to you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me, that they may be brought to perfection as one, that the world may know that you sent me, and that you love them even as you loved me. Father, they are your gift to me. I wish it where I am, they also may be with you, that they may see my glory that you gave me, because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world also does not know you, but I know you, and they know that you sent me. I made known to them your name, and I will make it known that the love with which you loved me may be in them and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So that last back and forth is really speaking to my brothers and sisters about unity. Unity. Unity in Christ, which is unity in love. It says, I have given them the glory you gave me, so that they may be brought to perfection as one, that the world may know that you love them even as you loved me. Interesting. That the world loved them even as you loved me, that you loved them even as you loved me. Wow, that's powerful. To be loved with the same love that God the Father has for the Son, <coughs> that's really being loved. I mean, that's like love to the max, to the nth degree. And this is Jesus' prayer for us, for each of us, and all of us together, that the love that unites the Father and the Son will be the love that exists among us in the middle of our lives. What a delight. What a great gift. And this delight is not just for us, but is meant for the entire world. It's meant for everybody, my brothers and sisters. Early in the Gospel of John, we read that God the Father loved the world so much that the Son was sent to give life to the world. If you want a reference, it's John 3. Now, brought together and made one in the same love that exists between the God the Father and God the Son, we are sent into the world in the same way, you ready for it, as Jesus was. That love that we receive from Jesus and from the Father sends us into the world to do the same thing. We are sent in the world the same way. Words of love, deeds of self-giving, reveal the truth of God's love for a broken world and for all people. I remember a story, a friend of mine, where they were in the midst of a, 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 they were out doing a march um, for Christian unity and so on and so forth, and things went bad. Things went bad. 
And they were all linked with arms with people, yelling at them and so on. And the leader of the group was saying, everybody stay together, everybody stay together. So they linked their arms and they said, one of them yelled out to him, he says, now what do we do? He said, we love them. We love them. What do we do? How do we respond to all this hatred? We love them. Words of love and deeds of self-giving reveal the truth of God's love for a broken world and for all people. Jesus says that he desires that the world may believe God sent him. Christian unity has a purpose, my brothers and sisters. Unity witnesses to the love of God now alive and active in the church. Does the church mean just the Catholic church? I'm not sure you could just say just that, based on what we're reading here. Unity witnesses to the love of God, now alive and active in, yes, our church, but perhaps all churches. Unity in Christ is unity in love for the sake of the world and for all of the people in it. And all of those people, my brothers and sisters, need God's love. Amen. And with that, my brothers and sisters, let us bring our prayers to the Lord whose kindness is unending. That the whole church will find renewed strength in God's love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we nurture vocations from our families to the priesthood and to religious life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the ill and the infirm will find abundant comfort in God's healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who worship here will find sure hope in God's promises. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the dying and those who have died, especially those who have passed from this church, will find everlasting joy in God's salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the prayers we hold in the silence of our own hearts. For these prayers and those entered into our prayer and petition book, that they may be received and answered by our God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. All holy God, you are merciful and gracious to us, your people. Look upon us in your great love and grant us the riches of your favor. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And let us come together and pray the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, and deliver us from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the mysteries we have received, O Lord, we pray, enlighten us by the instruction they bring, and restore us through our participation in them, that we may merit the gifts of the Spirit. Through Christ our Lord, amen. And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Hope you have a great Thursday. We're coming up on Friday, end of the work week, in a normal work week. But we will be back here tomorrow on Friday with another Liturgy of the Word. And we look forward to seeing you then. Amen. God bless.